Imagine you are a PhD student in a laboratory. You're excited about your research and why shouldn't you? Your supervisor is renowned for his research in developing new vaccines. You know that vaccines have helped us to get largely rid of many different nasty diseases including smallpox, polio, measles or mumps. So you start your research in fall 2019, but soon everything will change. The COVID-19 pandemic will start. You, like many other different scientists, will start to make your contribution to COVID-19 research. And you plan to develop the first COVID-19 vaccine. But how will you manage to do that? Maybe you're not interested in developing COVID-19 vaccines, but you're just fascinated by the topic and want to explain to your grandmother everything about COVID-19 vaccines. If that applies, then you found the right video. My name is Ken Steinek and today we will discuss everything you need to know about COVID-19 vaccines. This video is part of our COVID-19 series. So check out these videos afterwards if you're interested in the origins of SARS-CoV-2 or how we can treat it. Before we go through the most promising COVID-19 vaccines one by one, let's briefly discuss how vaccines are brought to the market. In order to get a vaccine approved, it has to be successfully tested in preclinical and clinical trials. Broadly speaking, it works like this. First possible vaccines are identified during preclinical trials. Here different vaccines are produced and given to animals in order to find out which brings the most promising results. If a candidate is chosen, then a vaccine will be tested in humans during clinical trials. You can compare clinical trials to the game Among Us. Scientists have several rounds to find out which vaccines are not what they are supposed to be. I rate this comparison 4 out of 10, mildly funny. We know phase 1 to phase 4 clinical trials and in order to be approved, a vaccine has to pass the first 3 clinical trials. In phase 1 clinical trials, scientists only recruit a few people in order to see if the vaccine is safe. So here all the possible side effects are monitored. If a candidate vaccine is successful, then it can be tested in slightly larger group comprising mostly 20 to 50 people. This is called a phase 2 clinical trial and scientists again want to find out the side effects of a drug and they want to optimize the dosage which is required in order to provoke immune responses. If again everything works fine, then phase 3 clinical trials can start which can involve thousands of different people. And this normally is the final round of testing before the vaccine is finally approved. As for now, October 2020, five different vaccines have been able to be approved for phase 3 clinical trials. So this is how we bring a COVID-19 vaccine to the market. However, I want to point something out. There are numerous candidate vaccines currently under development and we are not able to cover all of them. So I was thinking that it makes sense for me to present to you the different categories of vaccines and then discuss some promising candidates. That being said, let's start. All vaccines generally present a part of the virus to the immune system. So we inject viral particles or molecules in order to provoke immune responses, leading to what we call immunological memory. Immunological memory means that the immune system remembers the injected particles and once the respective virus infects us, it will get immediately destroyed. We go into more details in this video here where we talk about flu vaccines if you're interested. All of the vaccines are based on this principle. Let's start by talking about viral vectored vaccines first. The main principle here is that we genetically engineer another virus which is not harmful for humans in order to produce proteins from SARS-CoV-2. These viruses have normally been made unable to replicate, meaning that they are not transmissible and are also not really surviving or able to properly infect the body. So for example, we can use a chimpanzee adenovirus, which is normally not harmful for us, in order to make spike proteins from SARS-CoV-2. So if we vaccinate a person with an adenovirus, which produces SARS-CoV-2 proteins, then the immune system should be able to recognize these proteins and the person should become immune against COVID-19. The Oxford vaccine, which has been developed by the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca, is based on this principle. 
In phase one and phase two clinical trials, the Oxford vaccine has led to immune responses and mild adverse effects. Since these results have been quite promising, the Oxford vaccine will further be tested in 50,000 people in Brazil and maybe also in the UK or the United States. However, you probably heard that clinical trials using the Oxford vaccine had to be paused. Well, one participant actually showed severe side effects, but after some assessment, the trials are now allowed to go on again. Another adenovirus-based vaccine has been developed by the company CanSinoBio. This vaccine has shown good results during phase one and phase two clinical trials. The Chinese military has already approved its use and phase three clinical trials are conducted in Saudi Arabia, Russia or Pakistan. Then there is Sputnik V, which has been approved in Russia. The development of Sputnik V has been kind of rushed, so I cannot really tell you how promising the first results have been, so we have to wait for that. But this was our first category. Now let's come to vaccines where inactivated SARS-CoV-2 viruses are used. Yeah. This means that the vaccines contain SARS-CoV-2 particles, but they have been destroyed. And although these kind of vaccines might sound dangerous to you, many different vaccines in the past have been developed based on this principle. Hepatitis A vaccines or flu vaccines fall into this category and also now Coronavac. Coronavac has been developed by the company Sinovac Biotech. And again, in phase one and phase two clinical trials, this vaccine has been successful, meaning that it led to the production of antibodies while causing no severe side effects. But, but, and a very big but, information about this vaccine has only been released by the company and not by Finnish studies. So again, we have to wait until new data is released. The next vaccine category on our God tier vaccine list are subunit based vaccines. The idea is that we do not inject viruses, but isolated proteins of SARS-CoV-2. In principle, it works like this. We let the protein being produced in a virus and then we purify it. Then we inject them together with an adjuvant, which is a molecule which helps to trigger immune responses. Immune cells will recognize this viral protein and think that SARS-CoV-2 is present in the body, leading to an immune response and immunological memory. The vaccine NVX CoV-2373 is a protein subunit vaccine which has been developed by the company Novavax. This vaccine has also been quite successful in phase 1 and phase 2 clinical trials. No severe side effects were noted, only one patient got a mild fever. What is quite cool is that volunteers which had been vaccinated showed stronger immune responses against SARS-CoV-2 than people who had been previously infected. Since these results are also quite promising, Novavax announced that it will launch a phase 3 clinical trial in the UK. And lastly, we come to mRNA vaccines and I personally think they are very fascinating. mRNA vaccines are something completely new, meaning that no established vaccine is based on this principle. As we've already seen, most vaccines use inactivated or parts of viruses which are injected into the patient. mRNA vaccines, however, inject mRNAs. You might remember mRNAs from school, it works something like this. Genes are used in order to make mRNAs, which are then used in order to make proteins. After the mRNA has been injected, it will be taken up by cells, which then produce the viral proteins themselves. So our own cells produce a viral protein, which is then presented to the immune system, which of course will make an immune response and then this might lead to immunological memory. The great thing about mRNA vaccines is that they are much less affected by mutations in SARS-CoV-2, meaning that they might lead to longer protections. A promising COVID-19 mRNA vaccine is mRNA-1273. This vaccine has been developed by Moderna and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. In first clinical trials, two injections of mRNA-1273 led to the production of antibodies. As far as I'm concerned, there is still a phase 2 and a phase 3 trial going on. There is also a related mRNA vaccine which has been produced by Pfizer. And Pfizer is also planning a phase 3 clinical trial, so let's see how that goes.
So this was a rough outline of the different COVID-19 vaccine types and also some examples. Now I also want to address two questions which I think are very relevant. Number one, will the vaccine be safe? You cannot really say about any vaccine or any form of drug that it is safe. Drugs always have some form of side effect since the body is very complex. So the COVID-19 vaccine might cause side effects, but they will probably be very rare. And also vaccines have been the best option for many diseases in the past. So for example, they really helped us to eradicate smallpox and also will help us to get rid of malaria soon. What you now might say is that in the case of COVID-19, there is something very special, which is that the whole process is very accelerated. And that of course is true. It normally takes several years in order to develop a vaccine. And now we try to do that within one year. So in this case, it is especially important for scientists to report the results honestly and to monitor any possible side effects very closely. Then number two, will the COVID-19 vaccine be effective? This is also a very complicated question with a lot of different variables. What we know for sure is that the COVID-19 vaccine will give us some immune response and some form of memory in the long term. For now, however, we cannot say if the vaccine will actually make us completely immune against SARS-CoV-2 or if it will just make us less susceptible in catching it. The effectiveness of the COVID-19 vaccine will also heavily depend on how and when it will be distributed to who. The demand is very high and some scientists estimate that over 70% of the population will need to get vaccinated or be infected with the virus in order to stop the pandemic. And that of course heavily depends on how many people are actually willing to get the vaccine. And with that, I have one question to every one of you. Will you actually accept a vaccine if you're offered one? And I'm actually very curious about your opinions, so let me know them in the comment section. I hope that you enjoyed this COVID-19 vaccine update, and if so, feel free to leave a like and also subscribe and hit the bell button if you're new here. And with that, I'll see ya.